In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use Boris AIF Transfer to take timelines from Final Cut Pro and open them in Avid DS. The Boris AIF Transfer is a plugin that lets you take timelines from Final Cut Pro and open them in Avid Media Composer or Avid DS. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to take this timeline into Avid DS. So, first I thought I'd just go over the timeline so you can see what's going on and then we will transfer it onto DS on a Windows system. So we're really crossing the platform barrier here. Okay, first thing you notice in this timeline, I've got an Artbeats JPEG, which has been repositioned and resized, and some Artbeats footage underneath it. So that was not an accident. Moving down, we have a cross dissolve on some text. Now this is a native Final Cut text, showing you the product we're advertising right here. Okay, that does a cross dissolve out. Then we have another dissolve onto some footage which has been trimmed. And then underneath that, we get some different transitions here. We have a fade in, fade out transition between these two clips. Then we have a picture in picture effect. So you can see here, this clip has been resized and obviously repositioned. It's actually been animated, so the position has been keyframed. And once isn't enough, so we do it twice with another clip in another direction. So again, it's been resized and repositioned with keyframes. Okay, so those all go out together. And then we have a multicam sequence. So you can see here, uh, we've got different shots of Washington DC here. Moving down the line, incidentally, this is now footage firm footage you're looking at. So keeping everything nice and legal. Disclaimer alert there. Okay, so we have another uh, footage firm shot of a guy on a cliff. Don't jump. And we have some layered PNG files, which are not text files, but are image files with alpha. So you can see we've got three layers of alpha channel there. Each one goes away individually. And the guy decides not to jump, so everybody's happy. Next, we have a shot of a plane, which has been slowed down 80%. And if you look carefully, you'll see a little bit of a transparency there. Well, that's because we've applied a third-party filter BCC composite to this clip. So not only have we applied the filter, oh no, but we've got keyframes and we're using a well layer. So we have a lot going on on this one clip. And if I scrub through, you can see the effect change over time. That looks cool. It's like you've won a trip to San Francisco or at least stock footage of San Francisco. And then we have another uh, third party effect, BCC swish pan, which is a transition. And you can see it is a very popular looking transition. It's used everywhere, so uh, we've got to have that in our timeline. And we have a nice shot of the Boston skyline here, which is also using a BCC filter colorized glow. Scrolling down, okay, we have a slug, which is not too exciting by itself, but we have applied a BCC generator to it, the BCC brick generator. Um, and we are using a preset here, so we're going to carry over a preset into DS. Moving down the line, we have a nested sequence. So we left our Washington theme and have joined a family theme here. And they all look nice and happy, but for some reason we're going to throw all these pictures away. I don't know, I guess we're mad at them or something. Next, we have another speed change, and this is footage of girls just happily, you know, skipping through a field. And it's all peaceful and nice and calm, and oh my god, run for your life! Uh, so another speed change here, uh, 300%, 50, 300. And lastly, we have a clip with alpha channel. So you can see this uh, lovely footage here, and there is no filter applied. It is just a raw alpha channel on this clip. And as I scrub down, you can see a dissolve on the background. And I always have to point out that this whole composite you see here happened by accident. I just randomly chose these two clips, and you know, who would have thunk it? This is a brochure for Las Vegas if I ever saw one. And I've seen more than I want to admit right now. All right, and lastly, we've got some audio here. And if I scrub, you might be able to hear a little bit. Um, but if not, you can see that there's clearly audio in the sequence as well. All right, so we have a lot going on here. To take it into DS is actually really easy. All you have to do is select your sequence and go to File, Export, and select Boris AAF Transfer. Okay, so I want to make sure that I save my... AAF file with a title I will remember. I could use the sequence title or something else. I'm going to call it AAF Demo 
good. And I'm also going to come down here into these export settings. And you see we have all these options here. So if something goes wrong in the export, you can get an HTML log for uh, the effect translations. You can replace missing transitions with the dissolve. And of course, you can do some other things. I won't go over every one right now. Then you also have these sequence settings here. And it's really important that your sequence settings match your Avid project settings, or DS project in this case. Okay, so you've got all these different settings, and if these don't match, then it won't come forward correctly. So make sure you got that right. Okay, I'm also going to make sure that this export for Avid DS checkbox is checked off. And now that everything is here looks good, I'm going to hit export. Okay, oh, look at that. So we do have a HTML document telling us uh, that a couple things might have gone wrong, and we will see what those are later. Okay, and that's it. Now I'm going to open the AAF file in DS and see how this comes forward. All right, here I am on Windows XP 64, for those of you who doubted that I could actually do this. And I'm going to open DS and import that cool AAF file that we just made. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is create a new project. So you can just do that here. I'm going to title it something new and original. And if you look at my format, you'll notice that it's the same that I had when I exported the AAF out of Final Cut Pro. So we've got everything all set here. I say, OK. The new project gets created in a matter of seconds. And then we can begin importing our AAF. So you just have to locate the AAF file. And I should point out that since you're going from Windows to Mac or Mac to Windows that you will have to actually move the file from one computer to the other. But that's no problem. Here it is. So double click on the AAF and then you see all of these reference files here to all the files you had in your Final Cut project. So I'm just going to click on the one that was the sequence. This was the sequence file. And then just click and drag into your timeline. After a few seconds of conforming the project, you will see uh, your tracks seem to appear in the DS timeline. Okay, now you see this message. It says, you know, one error, six notes. Do you want to view the log? The first time you use AAF, I say yes. Okay, now if you see an X, that means something failed to carry over. And we might have expected this because the HTML log also said there was a problem when we exported. Now if you keep expanding these X's here, you see that this is telling us that it failed to create a transition. Well, let me tell you something. Don't worry about this one because we have worked around um, all of these little problems and you probably won't even notice, honestly. So that's what an X means. Something didn't naturally come forward. And if you see an I, well that pretty much just means that DS and Final Cut are different. So all of these errors are pretty trivial. Um, you might encounter one that helps you out, but for the most part, you can ignore all these because we've pretty much taken care of them in the steps you'll see later. Okay, so I'm going to say, all right, there. And look, here's our timeline. All right, let's go. Hey, wait a minute. What's happening? None of the media is there. All right, well, the first thing that you'll notice is that your media hasn't been uh, relinked yet. And that's understandable. It's a different computer. Yeah, the media is in a different location, blah, blah, blah. But you can see that all of the transitions and effects are still are still there. So we're already halfway there, right? Look, there's our generator. So we're done. No, no, no. All right, going back to the beginning, what you want to do now is click into your project folder, and you'll see all these clips with the red icon next to them. Okay, those all have to be recaptured. So to recapture in DS, if you know how to do it or not, you want to select all of your media. And if you're smart, you'll put all of your media in the same folder. If you are less smart, like me, you'll put them in different folders. So I actually have to relink the media to the specific folder where they're located. Now, if you had them all in the same folder, you'd only have to locate it once, but I have to do it a couple of times because I put them all in different folders. Don't ask me why, but now I'm just relinking, and you can see that it's actually really easy to just like say, oh, here's that file. You know, yeah, it's in this folder. Here it is. So you do this for your media, and then DS takes care of the rest, and it will import them all um, by itself. 
Now once you get to this progress bar, you might notice that it takes a few seconds, or if you have a lot of media, and if it's, you know, all HD, 2K, whatever, it might take quite a few minutes. And then all you have to do is wait. Or just go do something else. And here we are back in DS, and you can see all of the media has finally been relinked. And if I scrub through, you can see a near-perfect uh, reconnection of our timeline to before. Okay, so a few things we are going to have to work around here. The first thing is the JPEG image. So if I just click on this here, I'm going to scroll up. Okay, Artbeats logo. So we have this DVE effect applied to it, and one of the things that has been done is it's been scaled uh, incorrectly by DS. So I'm going to reset. Okay, there's our logo, and I'm just going to rescale it back down and reposition it where it was before. Okay, so we have that in place. Now it looks the same as it did before, right? Good. Okay, and we have the uh, dissolves still happening there. Those are good. We have our different fade-in, fade-out effect. There's the picture-in-picture -picture effect. Cool, check it out. And, of course, the logo still transitions off when it should. Scrolling down a little bit, you can see we do have the... Whoop, there's the audio. Um, can't hear it, but, you know, it's there. Scrolling back up. Here's the multicam sequence right there. You can see all the appropriate angles being loaded as they should be. Then moving down, we have the guy on the cliff. He still hasn't jumped, so great news for that guy. Going down, here are the PNG files, although you might notice they look a little different than they did before. So what we're going to do is just go into the clip properties. First thing I want to do is change the mat properties so that it's actually reading the alpha channel and not the Luma channel. Okay, so we're just going to do that for each one. You can see it's a very easy change to make. And then we have our appropriate alpha channel restored to our PNG files. Okay, the other thing you might notice is as with the Artbeats logo, we have a difference in scale here. This is a pretty easy difference to rectify, though. It's just 50% of what it should be. So I'm just going to put that back up to 100 for each one and it looks the way it did before. And you notice all these changes I'm making are very quick and you know relatively simple. They're all like one step fixes. And we have our transitions still on there as they should be and the guy is happy with his life. In fact he's so happy he's gonna walk back and go home. Okay moving down the line we have our plane here and our swish pan transition. Okay so all those have been maintained and the savvy uh, viewer might notice that the composite effect seems to be missing. Well, guess what, mister? It's not missing. You just have to relink the input clips. So, of course, because the two systems use totally different means of, you know, channeling the uh, media, you have to do this part again. So we go into the filter. Here we have the BCC composite. You can see that we do have our keyframes here. So this has been keyframed we just have to change the input. So I'm just going to grab the clip I had before, which is this one, put it into the input to layer, and here we are. Exact same effect that we had before. Okay, and it actually scrubs a lot faster here in DS, so I'm kind of enjoying that. All right, but going back into our timeline, I've got a little bit more to do. So as we saw, the uh, transition came through already. Here's the generator the appropriate preset applied. You can see the same look there. Scrolling down a little bit more and scrolling up as well. Okay, so here we have our happy family which is being destroyed by our cool effect. Next we have the girls in the field and again they are enjoying the day but not too much because it's time to get a move on. There they go with the speed change and lastly we have our lovely lady in Las Vegas. Now I do like the Bond Girl effect that we have going on here, but it's not the effect we wanted. So once again, I just have to go into the map properties and make sure it's using the alpha channel. And there it is, perfect as it was before in Final Cut. And there you have it. So not only have we gone from Final Cut Pro into Avid DS, but we've gone from Mac into Windows, which I think is a pretty cool thing to be doing. It's like when Nintendo started making games from Sega. It was like, blew my mind. Okay, so if you liked what you saw here and you want to try it out yourself, 
You can download a free, fully functional trial version from our website, and that's at BorisFX.com.